Hey, what is up guys? Ike Masters here today doing a LEGO Nexonites 2017 review, this time on item number 70351, Clay's Falcon Fighter Blaster. This set retails for $40 in the US and has 523 pieces. On the front of the box you can just see the actual Fighter Falcon Blaster and then battling Grimrock. And then you can also see all the minifigures on the back of the box, you can just see all of the functions, and then you can combine with Battlesuit Clay. Fully complete, you can see on the bad guy's side, we have three different figures, and then on the good guy's side, we have the Falcon Fighter Blaster. But first off, let's go ahead and take a look at the Falcon Fighter Blaster itself. Taking a look at the Falcon Fighter Blaster, you can actually see right away, which is kind of interesting, but the way that it sits on the ground, it's always sort of leaning upward because there's no actual landing gear on this of any sort, so it always leans on those stud shooters, so it always has this sort of like upward look, which that right off the bat is going to be something that's going to be annoying to some people. I already know for a fact that some people aren't going to like that, they're going to want more of just an even surface kind of like this or look more like that but you're just not going to get it with the way it's built because of the lack of any sort of landing gear another thing that's actually kind of annoying about this is that depending on what kind of surfaces you have you might be able to get enough traction where if you move it to the side these stud shooters will move enough whereas they'll actually shoot on the my surface that I'm using right now it's not going to work you can see the stud shooters do move but it does not shoot because there is enough friction there but on other surfaces with a lot more you know traction for you to get you are going to actually end up accidentally shooting the stud shooters and speaking of stud shooters they are very simple you know all you're going to do here is you're going to just twist it like so and then the stud will shoot out and good luck finding those but yeah, there's one on each side here, and they actually do include an extra set of them. They don't come with like an extra 12, there's just an extra 6. Taking a look at this cockpit session, you can actually see it's kind of really nicely done. You can see this new windshield piece, but you can see how perfectly it shapes with the actual bottom of it, which is just really cool. You can also see these two sort of like pretend blasters, or I guess if you wanted to, you could even pretend they're lights, but personally, I see blasters here. But you can also see there's a sticker here. And then on the top you can see there's two studs, which if you actually look at it closely, it looks kind of like the shape of a Nexo power, so that's something kind of interesting. But you open it up and you can see clay inside. And you can also see this console piece right here, which I mean it's nothing too crazy, it's just a pretty simple console piece. Uh, he does not actually have any sort of handles in there, and the way it's done is that this is about as far as you're going to get him to sit up because he generally you want him to lean back like this because the way the windshield piece is he's not going to be able to sit up that far however if you want him to sit up you can get him to about up here and then you can see he's like right touching the windshield piece you can also see in this cockpit section this little flap here and this just simply opens up and it reveals this little storage inside now on the box it shows that this little thing you can put it inside like this but then it'll be inside like that and you can close it up so I guess you could use it as sort of like a capturing thing but personally I think the best thing that you could do with this is either store extra studs here from the set for extra ammo for your stud shooter or you could just store the spare nexo powers. Moving further along the jack you can see there is a little bit of a treasure chest now this will not open if you have it inside so what you're gonna have to do is take it out like so and you open up and you can see inside the spare nexo power which is a nice little thing you could also put the spare studs in here if you wanted to you just put that back right here and you can see little storage for clay's shield which again is nice and actually adds a nice look to it it actually sort of finishes the overall design of it and makes it look better in my opinion so that's just kind of cool how they managed to put this in here and also make the actual thing look better and this is you know adjustable you can move it up and down like so and if you move it too far it will come off like that so you don't want to move it too far up but you can have it leaning back on the back here you can see actually a alternate vehicle which I'll show just a little bit but first off you can see these two little jet propulsions you know I wish they were you know colored here instead of just this normal gray color would have been cool if they could have put like say a trans orange disc just to add a little bit of extra you know 
um, appeal to it, at least in my opinion. You get a little bit extra color, it'll just look a little bit cooler from the back. But it's fine that they didn't, you know, it's just something that would have been cool. But you can see if you move this Nexo, um, this shield up, you can see that there is a little clip. Now, what you can do is very simply just grab it like this. Make sure you lift it up, because if you don't lift it up, it'll actually get caught onto this, um, this little contraption on the bottom. And you pull it out like so. Once you remove it, you get this alternate flyer. You can move this um, stud shooter down like so. And now you have a full ready to go sort of vehicle, which can actually feel like something that can actually combat an enemy. You know, the stud shooter here, you know, works just like the other one. You just turn it like so, and then good luck finding the stud. The windshield here, you can move it up and down to reveal that clay bot inside. There's no controls, no console or anything, but there is a sticker in the front, so it does give you that kind of vibe that you know you you can see how he would be piling it a little bit there's also clips here so you can put the clay bot sword and clay sword as storage and there are flick fire missiles on this thing you can also adjust these little flaps like so and this itself can move down but yeah flick fire missiles just push them and they'll go off not quite as good as the stud shooters or even some of the uh sort of like bolt shooters the spring loaded shooters but they are still nice you know it's a nice little feature, even if they're a little bit harder than you to use than some of the other ones. Yeah, this is actually just a very small vehicle, but it's still pretty nice. And then you can just easily reattach it by just clipping it back on like so. Alright, but there's still one big play feature left. Now, this is not, you know, any official name, but in my opinion right here, this is what you would call landing mode. Now, if you move, if you just kind of push this cockpit section in, you can see the wings will fold out like so, and they'll come out into what I consider flight mode. Now, this is just really cool. It covers up that gap in the middle, and you get a lot cooler, at least in my opinion, of a look. You can see just straight on, it's a really cool look. You look at it from alternate angles, it looks cool as well, and the top view is just magnificent, even if, you know, it's not going to be generally displayed from the top. Looking at it from the top, it just looks really cool. You can see some of the details, such as the stickers right over here, and then also these orange grill plates, and it just looks really cool. Now, you can see how this works. You can see just, you push the cockpit, and these two little Technic arms will push these other Technic arms, and they'll just move to the side. It's just a really nice function, and all you gotta do to put it back is just to pull the cockpit back out like so. And yeah, you can just kind of readjust these if you really want them to be all the way in. Um, it's gonna be really hard. You're generally gonna have these small little gaps here, you can see like so, but it's just a really nice function. It works rather seamlessly, it's very easy to activate, and it just gives it a whole nother sort of look to it. You know, you can fly around. These new sword pieces on the side just give a nice sort of extra detail to it that just makes it look a lot cooler. And the whole thing just looks really cool flying around. Taking a look at the minifigures, you can see the new 2017 version of the Claybot, just a small update, the 2017 version of Clay. This little thing, which there's no name on the box, so I'm not quite sure what this is called, but if you know, leave it in the comment section below and Brickster. Now these minifigures are actually a little bit hard to see so I'm gonna go ahead and remove the weapons so you get a little bit of a better look at them. Alright, that's better. Now taking a look at Brickster, you can see Brickster is very small. He's just a 2x2 two two sort of brick piece and you can see he has this printed front tile piece and you just connect his arms there and that's pretty much it for Brickster. He's just a very small thing. The other thing, this little sort of like spiked rock piece, again, it's actually kind of a cool piece, but you know, it's a little bit difficult to stand, and it's just a little bit interesting. He also has a printed 2x2 piece on the front. Taking a look at the new version of Clay, this version of Clay is actually very cool, I like it. You can adjust his visor just like last year, like so, and you can see his face there. And he has this new 2017 shoulder armor for the Knights, which also looks very cool. The Claybot has received a very small update with just these gray shoulders now and a blue visor in front. And just like Clay, the Claybot can move his visor. The backs of all of these figures are relatively uninteresting, but when you remove Clay's armor, you can see an alternate face and a little bit more detail on the back, and there is no alternate face for the Claybot. 
and here's the front of clay with all of the armor removed. You can see a lot of nice details in there. Also included in this set is Grimrock. Now I'm deciding to keep Grimrock out of the minifigure since he's a little bit more of a big fig. So taking a look at him though, you can see he's got these two giant wings which you can move a little bit. You can move them like this, get a little bit extra, you know, posability there. You can't move them up and down unfortunately, which I would have rather been able to do than move them side to side, but moving them side to side is still good. He also has a forbidden power in his hand which the way this connects is actually really, really cool. You can remove it and you can see you can remove and you can see there's actually a skeleton arm in trans blue which is just really nice and it clips into this sort of center piece on the side with his hand and it's just really cool because for one it blends in really well and it actually allows him to have a good grip on this thing so you know if you wanted to you could have his fingers out or something like that you don't know, get some extra poses there and it's just something really nice to see. His, finger, his fingers also are opposable, but you're better off removing the Nexo power or the Forbidden power in order to actually move them all around. You can move them, you know, all over the place, get some weird pose. However, if you have the Forbidden power in there, you are a little bit more restricted. On his other arm, you can see that he has this giant trans light blue spike piece, and you can see it's just hanging out like that, which personally I think that's really annoying, but you can have it move back. However, it's got to be in certain poses because in some poses, you know, gravity will just take over. You have it down like so, and it'll just automatically fall. So you gotta have it in certain areas for it to fully be back like this. However, I think if they just would have trimmed off this little extra thing here and just used an, an axle that would have um, allowed it to be this small, it would just be better. Because personally, I don't like I don't like this at all. I hate that you know you got this little thing in here is just sticking out like that. That's a little bit annoying to me. However, for some people, you know, that's not gonna bother them. But for me personally, I don't like it. So now all you can do here is you can spin it like so, and that's pretty cool, you know, you get a nice spinning action, it spins very well. You can see it actually moves all over the place, and it's just a very cool little neat small function. Grimrock's head is not able to move up and down just like most minifigures, however, you can move it side to side a little bit. You are restricted, but you can still get some extra posing in there. You can see he has these two purple horns in the on the sides of his head. Now similar to the Stone Warrior from Aaron Stone Destroyer, Grimrock has very big arms which is a little bit annoying because you know sometimes you'll see like right here his legs are kind of small so you have his arm and it'll be sticking all the way down. This one's even worse because you know he's got the giant weapon but personally that's okay to me because even if his arms are so big the extra posability is nice, you know, being able to move his arm to the side like this, you know, if you wanted to slash someone at the side or something, you can do that. Without these extra little, um, attachments to give him, you know, sort of almost like forearms, he wouldn't be able to do this, and you wouldn't get the extra posability. So that's nice, and I would just rather have it like this, so it's a nice thing on Lego's part. And the legs are also just kind of simple. You get posability in here, you can move them up like so, move them down, get some bending in the knees. And they're just nice. You can get them in sort of like a walking pose like this. They're they're nice. They're nothing too crazy, but they are nice. And Grimrock himself is just a nice figure. And a quick look on the back, you can see he has a posable tail. You know, he can move it up and down. And he has a little bit of coverage on the back. If you have a battle suit, you can take this little alternate flyer. And there's a little clip on the back here. And you can attach it like this. And then you can move this gun forward and you get like a powered up battle suit. In this case, I have clay. Now you have to make sure he's kind of leaning forward because otherwise um, the weight will be too much. But it adds just an extra look to it and it makes it look a whole lot more powerful. You still have access to that stud shooter and the flick fire missiles. And it's just a little cool little thing you can do if you have any of the battle suits. This set also comes with two Nexo powers and one forbidden power. I do not know the names of any of these, so I'm just going to describe them. The Forbidden Power has this sort of like chicken wing and a skull. The Red Nexo Power has like sort of a flying pumpkin. And then the blue one looks like it has some sort of like gorilla or something on it. So overall, Clay's Falcon Fighter Blaster is a good set. The selection of minifigures is really good, especially Grimrock, but it does have some problems. The actual Falcon Fighter Blaster itself, when you're in this landing mode, some people are going to be really annoyed by the fact that there's just a giant hole in the middle for the function, and they probably really easily could have just put maybe like a tile or something on the bottom to just cover it up, but you know, it's just open the way it is. Also, the fact that there's no landing gear, so it's always going to be in that sort of 
like facing upward position is gonna annoy some people who want to display it because it's never gonna be you know like parallel it's always gonna be at an angle but other than that there isn't really thing anything else that's really bad about this set the function works really well there's a lot of stud shooters so you got a lot of action there's also flick fire missiles the fact that you can have that sort of alternate flying vehicle is very nice and the actual vehicle itself looks good so that's nice and you do have storage and stuff for clay's weapons you can even capture villains the only real bad things are just that giant hole in the middle and for some people that the fact that you can't really have the landing gear but yeah that's pretty much it for my review on clay's falcon fighter blaster hope you guys enjoyed until next time see you guys later